I'm Janine Standard and I am with the marketing group for Proven Winners. My favorite plant? Now that's a really tough question. It might be Bottle Rocket when it's electric yellow lights up the shade. It might be my Invisible Spirit 2 Hydrangea. I love the blooms on this and the range of pink. Or it could be my Bobo Hydrangeas at the front of my house which we face west and on a windy day, you don't even see those guys move. They are just unfazed by weather. But honestly, I think it's this evergreen. My daughter brought it home from school one day after going to an environmental project field trip. It was in a little cup and we potted it up. And about five years ago, we lost a tree in this area and decided to unpot this. It was maybe only about two feet tall when we planted it. And now, probably in the six to seven range. Hi, this is Natalie. We're gonna talk a little bit about my garden bed today. I'm gonna to do it from inside because I live on a busy street and there's a lot of traffic. So we'll flash back and forth to my garden and I'll give you a little garden tour of some of my favorite plants uh, while I narrate the whole thing from inside here in my workspace. The first plant I want to talk about is Happy Face Potentilla. Now, I have three of these happy little shrubs in my front yard, and I love them because they're native and they're super durable. They have the sweet, petite foliage, and they're covered in bright flowers all summer. Now, the largest one of the three, and I find to be the most robust grower, is Happy Face White. I also have Happy Face Yellow, and they're both going to mature to be about two to three feet tall and wide. And then the smallest of the three is Happy Face Hearts, which has really pretty little pink blooms and is going to get to be about one to two feet tall and wide. Another great joy of mine in my garden is my daffodil bed. Now, I love tulips too, don't get me wrong, but I plant daffodils because it's something that the deer and the rabbits won't eat. I did try to plant tulips, but after years of trying to protect them, only to see them get lopped off in their prime, I decided why fight it? So narcissus are just such a great choice because they come in so many shapes and colors and sizes. And I planted a whole bunch of new ones last fall. And when they started coming up this year, I got so excited, I hopped online and bought 50 more bulbs. I'm also trying out a new shrub, Bloomerang Dwarf Pink Lilac. And even though it's only about a third of the size it's going to get at maturity, you can see it's bright green foliage and the pink tips that I hope are new little flowers that are developing. So I'm really excited about that one. I also love my Spirea. Right now I have double play doozy in my front and in my backyard. Now it's interesting to compare this with my old fashioned spirea, which was in my backyard when we bought our house 15 years ago. It's actually one of the few plants that survived my many, many garden renovations. Now all the spirea are leafed out right now, but the foliage on the old fashioned guy is just plain green, which is fine, but it's nothing in comparison to double play doozy, which is fire red right now, or the orange of double play candy corn. They are so beautiful. They fill my heart with joy. And we know the double play doozy is going to bloom over and over again. I don't have to shear off the blooms to get a rebloom. So it follows the trend of what you'll see in a lot of the plants that I really love. They're not only extra beautiful in some way than the traditional variety, but um, they're super low maintenance. I have a lot of garden beds and a lot to take care of. So having something that's really low maintenance is really important to me. Finally, I have three Invincible Spirit II smooth hydrangeas planted by my back patio. I got these when I first started at Spring Meadow and I promptly removed my old droopy Annabelle hydrangeas and I planted these in their place. Now this is their third year in the ground and you know what they say about hydrangeas, sleep, creep, leap. So this should be a banner year for these hydrangeas. Now I love them not only because they're native and they're super low maintenance and they have that beautiful pink mop head bloom, but also because they symbolize the great work the horticulture industry is doing to help combat breast cancer. One dollar for every Invincible Spirit two hydrangea sold is donated to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. 
Through sales of these hydrangeas and through Pink Day events across the nation, we have raised over a million dollars to help fight breast cancer. So that makes it a pretty special plant to me. Hi guys, I'm Marshall Dirks, the Director of Marketing for Proven Winners. Some of my favorite plants have special memories. And in the case uh, of uh, some peonies that our family enjoys, they're from my uh, wife's grandmother. And so those are family treasures, if you will. I enjoy our fine line uh, ramness um, and they're just spectacular. They create an incredible border along the side of our house and creates a nice walkway. Then uh, Atlas Rose is my wife's favorite rose. She loves the scent, so we've got a dozen of those in front of our house. In terms of annuals, our family enjoys lemon coral. I am out in my garden with my favorite plant, and it happens to be a tree. So this is our peach tree. It's a Reliance peach, um, and we planted it on our anniversary a couple of years ago. Um, and we loved it so much that we actually moved it from our old house to this house. Um, and it seems to be doing just fine. Um, it had a ton of blossoms um, earlier this spring, so they got a little bit touched by the cold weather we just had. But I think that, um, I think some of them will be all right. So I think we'll still get some peaches. Um, and I love this tree because it has obviously meaning to me, but also it produces peaches and that is my favorite thing to eat. I'm with another one of my favorite plants. This is a double flowering almond. Um, so it's best show comes in the spring and it is just the cutest, fluffiest little thing. Um, and it, it's little beauties combined to bring a really big show. So it's just starting out, thankfully. It doesn't seem like it was affected at all by the frost. Um, and we're gonna get to enjoy its show this year. So the last of my favorite plants that I'm gonna share with you today is my Gatsby Pink Oakleaf Hydrangea. Um, its blooms are obviously gorgeous. They're huge. Um, they make quite a show. I can't wait until this baby matures a little bit more so they can have even more and be prolific. But what I really love about it are its leaves. So it provides a lot of different texture in the landscape. I have a lot of grasses um, by where it's planted. So it really just kind of creates a big chunky presence um, over here. And in the fall, it just becomes the most beautiful show. These, uh, these leaves turn bright red and they just glow right from um, the back of the garden and people driving by can see it and it's just really beautiful. So I'm really glad um, that it seems to be doing well this spring. You want to talk about favorite plants? Do you have favorite plants yet? No? Not yet? Oh really? Well, I have to say that I am heavily biased towards shrubs when it comes to my favorite plants. Um, I have a lot of them though, so I'll just dive right in. The first uh, group of plants that I have to talk about would be <laughs> hydrangeas, of course. Can you say hydrangea? This plant right behind um, us is Tough Stuff Hydrangea, which is probably the most reliable of all of the hydrangeas we have out here in the garden. It is um, a mountain type hydrangea and it blooms without any problem year after year after year. It's one of the earliest to flush out and we have just had three days of below freezing temps and I have had to run it to cover up all of my max and I haven't done anything to this and it looks perfect. When it comes to creating a little bit of magic, magic like in your yard I have one more hydrangea that I am so excited I planted this last year um, and this is climbing hydrangea and they do grow well in shade um, and they climb up the plant they do not hurt the tree and they will be covered in frilly white flowers lace cap flowers clematis that razzle dazzles me every single year is still waters 
And when we first introduced it, it wasn't one that I got really excited about. I mean, it's a lovely plant, but it has so many blooms um, that it quickly became a favorite. So let me flip the camera around and show it to you. See those little spikies right there? That is going to be a beautiful glomerus. If, for some terrible reason, I could only plant one thing in my garden for the rest of my life, one type of plant, I would say ferns in a heartbeat. I love the texture, the varieties, the colors. You can have little ferns, you can have giant ferns, green ones and purple ones and silver ones, fat leaf ones, really frilly ones. Um, they're just a must have for me and I don't, I add more every year. I don't even know where they all are at this point. Um, and I'm adding 16 more. <laughs> Final plant. And if I had to pick just one plant to be my absolute favorite, it would be this one right here, which I think is such an underutilized plant and is big. That's probably why. But if more people gave it a chance, if more people found a little spot for it to love, love and live in, I don't think they'd be disappointed. And this plant is Aphrodite calicanthus. And it has the most amazing blooms that are large red blooms and they have huge glossy leaves. These little guys right here, they're gonna get so much bigger. Um, they are fragrant. They bloom all summer long. And I, I mean, this is one of those plants that I still remember the first time I saw it. What, what could this beauty be? And I, I found out right away. And then it took me several years to finally figure out where where in the world in my tiny garden I could put it. And I found a spot for it. It is magical. Ah. I love this plant so much. Which plants are your favorite? Can you point it out? Hyacinth. Hyacinth? Right here. And what do you like about those ones? Because they are goopy inside. <laughs> when you squish them, they're goopy? Okay. I want to pick out some flowers for you out of the garden. You can do that. That's fine. Here you go. Here, hold it just like that. Fresh flowers for you. So I have a couple favorite plants. Uh, the first one is basically every hydrangea that I can grow. I tried to grow here. Um, my girlfriend loves them in the summertime. They're a great cut flower that we bring in the house and uh, it, it brings her a lot of joy. So I put a lot of work into it. They aren't the easiest plants in, in Central Texas to grow, um, but I've been you know, working and exploring with the, the, the huge line that we have and seeing what work, works down here and what doesn't. And I've been pleased that I've got a bunch of items to grow that you, you wouldn't normally think work down in, in Texas, but with a little bit of care, a little bit of babying, they do really great. So speaking of hydrangeas, I've got uh, two that I'm gonna be transplanting tonight. Um, I just recently redid this bed and I think that they're gonna look really great here. Um, and again, just keep on growing as many hydrangeas as I possibly can in this yard. Another one of my favorite plants are plant groups because can't have just one favorite plant because <laughs> I'm a plant nerd are uh, the canna that I have I appreciate them just because they're so bright um, they're they bloom six to nine months which you know through something anything that can bloom through the heat of the summer here is really appreciated they always look healthy even though the soil is really poor but they never you know show any symptoms of that on their foliage in particular, probably even the most specific of all the can out is this red variety that I found. Found it a few years ago out when I was traveling. It was on a compost pile and it really caught my eyes. I had to go over and even see what the plant was. 
and I brought a clump back with me in um, a grocery bag, carried it on a plane, and I've been dividing it for the last several years, and now it, it's a, a whole entire bed in front of my house, and I get a lot of compliments from it from people who pass by, so I know that they appreciate it as well too, and in my opinion, you just really can't beat a nice bright red in the garden. Hey, it's Stacy, and today I'm gonna show you um, some of my favorite plants, not all of my favorite plants are blooming or even actually emerged yet. Here in Michigan, we've had an unusually cool spring, so a lot of things are behind um, and will be several weeks, if not months, from blooming. But I do still have a lot of really cool stuff that I'm super excited about and um, do really like that I want to share with you. So first up is one of my favorite shrubs. This is one of the plants that we sell, and it's a nine bark. And you know, a lot of nine barks, you know, they're just kind of ho hum. But this one is ginger wine nine bark. And what I love about it is it's super durable. I grow it in my native plant garden because it is native to North America. And um, it absolutely loves my super dry, super well drained, super sunny garden. And the color is just incredible. It looks fantastic with just about everything. So another thing I'm super excited about, these are actually almost done, but these are anemone blanda. They're a fall planted bulb that blooms in spring and they just bloom forever. They have done super well in my garden and continued to come back and expand for a long time. Here I have them paired with summer snowflake, Lucogem estivum. Um, and even though this combination is just about at its tail end, I'm still really enjoying it. So speaking of bulbs, this is a really cool bulb that I adore. This is Fritillaria persica. Um, I don't know the common name on this, but as you can see, um, it has this fabulous kind of blue-green foliage and these really dramatic uh, dark purple blooms. Um, this is one bulb and it um, gets all of these stems and all of these flowers and uh, it deserves a better spot than where I have it but I still really like it. Speaking of cool bulbs in this garden, this is a really unique Muscari relative called Belvalia and it's uh, characterized by this extremely distinctive purpley black foliage. One more bulb that I want to share with you. This is Valerie Finis Muscari. So Muscari is also known as Grape Hyacinth. And this particular variety is really cool because it has just that gorgeous sky blue color. Um, I thought I really liked the standard purple ones, but I love the sky blue and Valerie Finis even more. So my garden is crazy sunny and crazy dry. Um, so I kind of like to only pretend that I can grow ferns well. So they don't always look this great by the end of the season, but right now they look absolutely amazing. And this beauty right here, this is Korean tassel fern. And what's so cool about this one is that the foliage just comes out covered in these brown fuzzy hairs and it's just really dramatic and very cool. For my last favorite plant, I'm actually gonna show you my favorite garden, at least right now. And this is a hardy succulent garden that um, we've been putting together for a couple of years. And I'll just zoom in and show you some different highlights right now. But as you can see, hopefully, um, it's just a, a real tapestry of colors and textures and a lot of different sedums and semper vivums. And it's really just changes so much. You can see there's a lot of really cool different bulb foliage in here. Some of that stuff has already bloomed. Some of it is still yet to bloom. Um, but this is just an endless source of fascination and joy in my garden. So that's it. Of course, if you come back another time or visit my garden or watch another video, I'm probably going to have a completely different set of uh, favorite plants. And that's the great thing about gardening, right? Is that um, it's so dynamic and things are always changing. So there's always something new to fall in love with. What is my favorite plant? And I think that is actually a really hard question to answer because I have a lot of favorite plants. I could tell you Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, which I still think is one of the best plants on the market. And it's been, I use it almost every year since we introduced it. So I love that one. Um, I really, really love playing the blues, um, our rocket and playing the blues salvia. Right now that might be my number one plant. It's blue, first of all, it's tall, um, and it attracts bees and butterflies and hummingbirds. And it is true blue. It's not really a perennial for us, but occasionally I have it over winter. So 
I think that's really cool too, but I would say that is probably my favorite plant at the moment. Here we go, just uh, talking about some of the my favorite uh, spring plants. All right, one of my uh, first favorite plants here is uh, Primula Bellarina Cream. And uh, the whole Bellarina series is great. To me, the personally, my uh, favorite is the cream because the color goes great with almost anything else in the garden. And uh, here you can see another uh, Bellarina Cream here. The flower coverage is just fabulous. And, uh, and it's, it's really, uh, a, you, it's really a foolproof plant. You plant it, give it some sun, and uh, you can see the wow factor. Hey, one of my other favorite plants is Hosta Liberty. Look at that beautiful, brilliant uh, color. Uh, it is just absolutely fabulous. It's just, uh, it's a showstopper from 40 feet away. A hostile Liberty, that nice wide gold margin. Every garden needs some spring bulbs uh, for that early punch of color, and I love uh, spring tulips. I also love peonies, and this here is a uh, intersectional peony. This is Bartzella, one of the very, uh, probably the best known of the uh, Ito hybrids, the intersectionals, and then also this beautiful double red a uh, variety called Red Charm. You can see the nice large buds right on the top of it. This is another showstopper. This variety was actually introduced uh, over 70 years ago, back in 1944. Uh, it's large, bright red uh, flowers. It's actually quite sturdy. It rarely needs staking, at least in our garden. Uh, this, is, this is my wife's favorite plant in the whole garden, Peony Red Charm. This is Dicentra Valentine. It's an improved version of the, the standard old-fashioned bleeding heart, the Dicentra Spectabilis. Uh, the improvement is the real dark foliage, dark stems, and exceptionally vibrant red flowers, nice compact habit. And another plant that really looks good everywhere in the garden this year is Brunera Jack Frost. This is a shade plant. It'll tolerate uh, a bit of sun as well. But everywhere in the garden this year, Brunera Jack Frost is a real standout. And uh, last but not least, this is Sambucus Lemony Lace. Uh, this plant is almost seven feet tall. I think it has just uh, the right spot here with uh, great fertile soil, good moisture, and you can see all the new growth on it, all the flowers. Uh, this is just an absolute specimen. And as that growth develops and matures, it becomes even brighter as the season goes on. Uh, Sambucus lemony lace. Hey, it's Diane from Spring Meadow in Michigan. And there's a freeze warning tonight. So it's cold out here. But I need to let you know um, my favorite plant if kind of for right now it's um i've got this wall over here and it's kind of hard to see but there's three trellises oops four anyway on it i have virginia creeper as well as honeysuckle and the honeysuckle when it gets going it's really nice and it provides privacy so it smells good and blocks out the neighbors what more can you ask for hey everybody it's jessica and lauren so we're outside here in our backyard and we're going to share a few of our favorite plants with you and picking our favorites is pretty hard isn't it lauren yeah yeah because we like a lot of plants here i wanted to show you a couple of plants i like hostas and herbivores my favorite annual vista bubblegum why do you like it so much lauren because it's really pretty. It's really pretty. And how big does it get in the summer? As big as me. Well, not as big as you, but it gets pretty big, doesn't it? Yeah. So, hey everybody. This is one of my favorite perennials ever. Um, I know it's really hard to see out here, but this is a peony, an interspecific peony called Peony Bartzella. And it just has the most beautiful yellow flowers. Uh, in late May, early June, they're fragrant, they're beautiful, they're amazing. And this uh, peony has kind of a special meaning to me. It was given to me by one of my good friends, uh, a breeder named Hans Hansen. So another one of my really uh, favorite items, this is Lemony Lace Sambucus. I just love the chartreuse foliage. 
um, it almost reminds me of a Japanese maple in the garden but the thing that I really really love and it's hard to tell there's a lot of stuff coming up right now it's a little early here but I have some ornamental allium I also have um, some acanthus over here called bear's breech which is a really cool perennial um, kind of a light lavender purple flower and when you kind of pair that with the lemony lace sambucus it's just stunning hey guys check it out the pears are flowering so last but not least, a couple of our favorites in our side yard are our limelight hydrangeas and our pears. And you want to know what, guys? Lauren's sitting here really close to me, and she just ate some chives. What do you smell like, Lauren? Onions. Onions, yeah. So we have lots of fun in our garden. Hope you guys are having fun, too.